Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 33 to 36. It's the Gospel for Friday of the third week of Advent. St. John writes, Jesus said to the Jews, You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. That's from John chapter 5, verse 33 to 36. We are led to think of John, John the Baptist, and Jesus Christ. As far as I'm aware, there are only two sources of information about John the Baptist, the New Testament, and Josephus. Of course, there are many critically important figures who feature nowhere except in the Scriptures. Were it not for the fact that the Bible mentions him at some length and in different places, no one would now, would now know of the existence of the great prophet Elijah. There are a couple of steels, that is, slabs with inscriptions, which, it seems, mention King David, but were it not for the Bible, which alerted archaeologists to the steels in question, scarcely anything would be known of him. Nothing would have been known of Abraham and the patriarchs, nor even of Moses. John the Baptist is referred to repeatedly in the writings of the New Testament. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, He is mentioned about 23 times, and some 18 times in the Gospel of Mark. In the Gospel of St. Luke, he is referred to about 24 times, and in the Gospel of John, about 17 times. In the Acts of the Apostles, he is spoken of about nine times. He is also mentioned in the letter to the Galatians. As said, the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus also mentions him in his Jewish Antiquities, chapter 18. Josephus writes of John that, and I quote, Herod had him killed, although he was a good man and had urged the Jews to exert themselves to virtue, both as to justice toward one another and reverence towards God, and having done so, joined together in washing. For immersion in water, Josephus writes, it was clear to him could not be used for the forgiveness of sins, but as a sanctification of the body, and only if the soul was already thoroughly purified by right actions. And when others massed about him, for they were very greatly moved by his words, Herod, who feared that such strong influence over the people might carry to a revolt, for they seemed ready to do anything he should advise, believed it much better to move now than later have it raise a rebellion and engage him in actions he would regret. And so John out of Herod's suspiciousness, was sent in chains to Machaerus. That's what Josephus writes. So Josephus knew of reports about the Baptist and his spiritual influence, but he was not dependent on the gospel. His somewhat tangled account of the nature of John's rite of baptism suggests a very different source for him. Josephus, of course, was writing some 60 years after John's death, and as a non-devotee. What Josephus indicates is something of the spiritual stature and fame of John the Baptist as it struck a Jewish historian with other interests many decades later. What he writes may also indicate that John's true mission may have escaped some. We read in the Acts of the Apostles of Christian missionaries encountering disciples of John who knew little of Jesus. When Paul visited Ephesus, he found disciples of John who did not know that together with his baptism of repentance, John told the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verse 4. It seems that some heard some things John said and moved on, while others heard other things and became disciples of Jesus as a result of his direct testimony to our Lord. What the Gospels give us is the character, person, and true mission of this great man of God, 
whose earthly course, as was that of Jesus, was so brief. His work of exerting the Jews to virtue, as Josephus puts it, and his immersion in water, as Josephus expresses it, was fundamentally preparing the people for the good news of the imminent coming of the kingdom of heaven, as we read in the Gospel of St. Mark and Matthew. Specifically, his mission was to make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said, John chapter 1, that he, that is, the one standing among you, might be revealed to Israel, John chapter 1. Well, all of this brings us to our gospel passage that I read earlier, in which our Lord refers to John. To begin with, our Lord tells us that John testified to the truth, and that he was a lamp that burned and gave light, and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. So he truly bore witness to God's truth as a great prophet, giving light as a lamp of God in the darkness. Christ accepted John's testimony to him and invited his enemies to accept it as the testimony of an acknowledged prophet of God. This was powerful testimony indeed, but it was not the only testimony that Christ could appeal to. There were his works. As we heard, I have testimony weightier than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. John chapter 5. How many, how great they were, and how far beyond, above anything John did. He healed the impossibly sick, drove out demons, fed the multitudes, walked on the sea, and calmed storms, spoke with unparalleled authority. His greatest works, of course, were those manifested in and performed by his own person. Greatest of all was the offering of himself to his father on Calvary, the sacrifice of the Lamb of God taking away the sin of the world, as John predicted he would. Then, astounding work indeed, he rose from the dead as he predicted, and on the day he predicted the third day. He then ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of his heavenly father. Then a further great work, he, together with the Father, sent the Holy Spirit to the church. Thus he baptized with the Holy Spirit, as John had said he would. Let us think of John's testimony, and how it was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. <laughs> 